of the day. A few clouds move in tonight. We'll see an overnight low of around 5 below. Try to warm things up a bit tomorrow with a high of 15. I'm meteorologist Tim Wright for 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. This is On the Block with Strick and Nate. Nebraska Basketball Hall of Famer and nine-year NBA vet, Eric Strickland. Strickland for three! And you're going to go out of here as the Big Eight tournament champion. And hokey homer turned Husker, Nathan Brennan. Everyone knows that I'm the smartest person here. Coming at you live from the heart of Lincoln, America. On air and online at theticketfm.com. Brought to you by Mary Ellen's Food for the Soul. This is On the Block with Strick and Nate. Welcome to On the Block. It is E. Strick and it is not Nate Brennan on the microphone on the one check. Hey, but I do like the sweater, my guy Rico Alvarez Clary. What up? He's in the building with up. us. Had to break up the sloth sweater. I wore this when I graduated from college. Oh, wow. Yeah, it still fits. It still Does that mean you're still in great shape? I've always been in great shape, Strick. <laughs> Shout out to everybody listening in. And this segment and show is consistently and always sponsored by Mary Ellen's Food for the Soul. So- you, can, you can find them on 27th and Pine Lake. Go out there, shout out, and have a good conversation with our good friend of the show, Charles and the crew, and let them know that the block and the blockhead sent you. So listen, a um, lot of stuff to get into, a lot of stuff going on. It is the end, the last segment before Christmas, so we're wishing every one of you a happy holiday to you and yours, your families, your loved ones, those who are joining us by way of Twitch, Facebook, Twitter, and uh youtube we appreciate you and your continued support as well of 93.7 the ticket as well as here on the block um so listen rico man there, there's a lot of lot of stuff going on man and i have some stuff i was going to throw out to you today uh we're going to talk a little bit about you know some of the recruiting rankings uh the winners and the losers uh what you maybe think about that we'd love to hear from you on the solder hammond text line at 402-464-5685 who you think are some of the winners who you think are some of the losers I have some opinions on a few things that um, are tossed out there right now. Uh, we're going to have a conversation with Evan Bland at 225, 230 time frame. We'll also move on to some of this discussion, how he feels about uh, the Huskers and how they fared as well. And then uh, we're going to the second hour. We'll talk about some of the bowl games that we've seen, witnessed, and what you will be looking for as we get into. And, and I loved what you were talking about, Rico. You were talking about who runs the Christmas holiday. Is it the NBA? Is it the NFL? There's a lot of competition going on right now, so we'll get into I that. I know as I'm well. right. I know I'm right. You know you're that. right. Know are you the I smartest guy in the room? Are you? Are you? No, are you I have other never. Than... I have never claimed to be the smartest guy in the room. I just know a lot of things about nothing. Well, a lot of useless facts in this here noggin. Well, let's let's get into it then. Um, recruiting rankings, winners and losers. Like, let, let's be real. Um, when everybody thought that the Alabama Crimson Tide were the dynasty was about to fall off the la di di do la di di do la di di do da they thought they, about the, they thought the sky was falling a lot of four stars some five stars jumped in the transfer portal they started bolting elsewhere a lot of people didn't understand it couldn't figure out what what was going on is there something is there a change is people not feeling saving anymore a lot of that was going on and then they turn around and have as it states right now, and it has already surpassed Texas A&M, who broke the points record. Um, they are now the number one recruiting class of all time. Ever? All time. Whew. They they right now have seven five stars. My goodness. They just landed. Um, well, well, they're talking. And here's the thing. Um, we found out that Cormani McLean, who is the number one cornerback, uh, he's an original Miami commit. He's mm-hmm. the number 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 nine overall. Um, he he was supposed to go out to Miami. He hasn't been getting on flights. You know, he's supposed to go here. He's supposed to go there. A lot of people yep. have been, uh, you know, expecting him, and he's kind of been wishy-washy on that. He did not sign, said his mother 
stated that he was not going to sign. So you have it was that. a big surprise to everybody. I mean, yeah. his, his yeah. high school had a cake and everything set up for his signing day, and he just never showed up. Yeah. So it, it's not like you know he he informed everybody. It was it was seriously a last second thing for him deciding. You know what? Maybe I don't want to go to Miami, or maybe I don't want to sign just yet. Maybe I want to I want to take my time, wait till the February signing day, and. Uh, talk to a couple more schools, maybe t- take a couple more visits and, and see uh, exactly where I want to go. Exactly. But with that in mind, they had six, and then Desmond Ricks became the seventh five-star in Alabama's 2023 class. Uh, man, listen, it is an historic wow. class that they happen to pull off. Uh, Ricks is the number two cornerback in, in this year's class. So they have the number two, and they're also chasing the number one. So uh, Ricks is a 6'1", 170-pound. Uh, he's the 28th signee in this class after they after we thought that they were about to fall off the map. And here they go. They revamp, retool, and Nate, Nick Saban comes across as the Don once again. Still a genius. Still, he never faltered. Never. I, I never had any doubt that Nick Saban and Alabama would pull through. They've got the... So of the how many five stars, seven, five stars, whatever it is, they have the number six. These are national rankings. Number six, number 10, 12, 18, 22, 23, and 25th best players in the nation signed to their class. Crazy. Seven players in the top 25 are going to one school. Absolutely. Sick the of just get richer. And we actually have a <laughs> phone call if you want to take that. We've got Mike on the line. Yeah, take that. Mike, you're on the block. What's up? Not much. Oh, boy, I hate to change the direction of the show, guys. I called before it started, but I got a question, Eric. I was uh, going through YouTube TV last night just looking for something, and I saw a, a, a highlight of the se- the 98 season, I believe, or maybe it was 97, where you guys won the NIT and I was a season ticket holder, so I remember that team well. That was a really, really good team. I remember you guys went out to Oregon early in the year, won a tournament out there, and the coach said, hey, that's that's a Sweet 16 team. So I just wanted to ask you a couple of questions that came to mind as I was watching that. I, I know you drove the car, no doubt about it. But were you surprised Jerron Boone didn't uh, – play at all in the NBA and then I was kind of curious why Troy Pajkowski left the team before his senior year and lastly you said yesterday football was your favorite sport did you ever think about playing two sports in college thanks a lot well Mike yeah that's a loaded question thank you so much for that let's start with the Troy Pajkowski situation first I just think that Troy felt that um, with some of the changes of the guard some of the people that was coming in he just didn't really feel potentially that he was a fit um, and just kind of wanted to go. He was he, he was kind of having sporadic minutes. There was not a lot of consistency with that. Uh, so, yeah. Um, two, uh, the question was, it was it was us going out and being a Sweet 16 type of team. Um, it's very similar to what you, you're seeing, what's going on with, like, Golden State right now. We're going to talk about that sometime yeah, as well later. in the segment later on in the second half. But it's very similar. What ends up happening is you have – a tight knit group, a bond. That Nebraska team in '96 was was probably the second best team in the Big Eight. That you know, talent wise, we 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 were that good. We had all our our class coming back after um, pretty much having a pretty good run in our our junior campaign. So we felt good about that that senior uh, year coming back. Right. So uh, you have a lot of clicking that ends up happening guys started kind of going their own way then there starts being little freeze outs you know there's a guy open you don't really like him because you know you had some beef and some little you know tick he ain't with my click no more but it's really we all the click we the we the game <laughs> you know we, we're supposed to be in the yeah. but then you have all these little nitpicking things and unfortunately i think uh a lot of uh, some of it was spawned by some feelings that guys had for Danny knee. Some guys felt that Jerron was getting some preferential treatment and, you know, just different things like that. And so that's why we had our separation in, in our breakage. That team was absolutely uh, that caliber of team. And that's what you saw in the run that we made in the NIT. 
you saw it all coming back together. And a lot of those teams felt that way when they played us. There's probably no team in the NCAA that probably wanted to play that team if we we would have got in. If you so, had it all going. Yeah, if we had it, once we had it all going, there was there was nobody that probably would have wanted to play us because we 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 were rolling. Yeah. Um now third the third one was um regarding did you ever think about playing two sports? Oh, two sports. Uh <laughs> so Mike. I, I did. Um, coming into college, I was actually playing professional baseball for the Florida Marlins uh, for my first two years. So my freshman year going into my sophomore year, I was actually playing. And then my fifth year, I actually went out to football practice for a few days. It was the craziest dynamic to go out. And I haven't had a, it was a spring practice. No, it was it was a, it was kind of like a, a winter practice before the spring and all that or something. And um it was preparation for the spring. That's what it was. And um, I went out. I didn't have a playbook. I didn't have anything. They put me on the first team. I'm running with the first team uh, at the wingback position. And they're literally, <laughs> they're literally telling me, okay, go in motion, run, run a, a 10 and out, go in motion, run a post corner, go in motion or, or get in the slot and run a dig. They were just telling me in the, in the huddle, what I was supposed to do. It was the Here, do this. Thing. <laughs> yeah, here, do this, do that. And, and and listen, in that practice, Mike, they probably, Rico, they probably passed the ball more than they probably passed in a season just in that one practice. Try guy, let's see what ball. this guy's got. Let's see what he's got. Yeah, so it was cool. It was good to go out and kind of wet my whistle, but I, I kind of figured it was, it, and, and, and listen, my body ached, Rico. <laughs> listen, I you play. understand. Well, Go ahead. Football just a little bit different. From yes. Baseball. Yes. A little more contact. A little more say. contact, and and you're using different muscles. Mm -hmm. So that was that was uh, something that was wild as well. You always man. think you're in shape until you go to do a different sport. Like you know during right. you know during track season, I feel like I'm in great shape, and then we're just like, hey, let's get a game of basketball going, and you run up and down the court twice. You're like, this is different. I just I'm sucking wind right now. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, no doubt about it. Um, tapping back in, going between winners and losers. Rico, I want to throw this one out. What do you think this is? Do you think Notre Dame is a loser? They lose two five stars. I think Peyton Bo Bo uh, Bowen and, and Jalen Lamar. Yes. Um, the running back, and they lose a safety, which ended up going. That Go safety in itself is a tribute to the craziness so of the system. See, so he went, he decommitted from Notre Dame, committed to Oregon, decommitted from Oregon. Took like a couple hours and then committed Oklahoma. and signed with Oklahoma. And the rumor was that he was going for his girlfriend mm. who plays soccer at Oklahoma. The Oklahoma soccer team posted a picture of her with a heart and like a kissy face or something like that on their Twitter after he signed with Oklahoma. So there's no question why he went to Oklahoma. That was a... Uh... Uh, Adrian Martinez type of deal, huh? It was a collective They're, get. So look, far. man, football, <laughs> football players and their soccer girlfriends. Me and Nick were talking about it. It's just oh, man. they're undefeated right now. Yeah. So, so if you I, want I a consider, football player, you just sign their girlfriend. Just sign their soccer. girlfriend and soccer team. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're good to go. <laughs> um, two, two things. Um, I want to throw this out to you. Um, Nebraska is going to play Colorado first game yes, next sir. season. Yes, Sirski. Um. Do you think Nebraska, as it stands, mm -hmm. is a winner compared to Dion right now? Yes. Or do we still have to wait for more dominoes to fall in the spring because there's still more work to be done? And who do you think wins out of the class, out of the group who came late to the party, which both of them did when you're talking about recruiting? As it stands right now, Nebraska and Matt Rule are winners over Dion and Colorado. Dion and Colorado had a, a, a decent class. They had a pretty good class. But in terms of what everybody was expecting from mm -hmm. Dion when he signed there and what everybody was expecting Colorado to do when he got there, it's not even close yeah. to what was supposed to happen. Yeah, he got his son, obviously, to sign there. Yeah, he got Travis Hunter, uh, the number one corner, number one defensive back, uh, number what three player uh, in, in last quarter. year's class uh, to, to, to sign there, to transfer there from, from Jackson State. But in terms of the rest of the big names that were, I mean, rumored to go there and, and the fact that, oh, Dion's at a power five division one school now, he's going to be able to flip some of these other five stars because, I mean, it's Dion Sanders, right? And it just didn't happen. Didn't work. 
Mm-hmm. So I, I would say that as it stands right now, Nebraska is the winners over Colorado. As you said, there's still some more dominoes to come uh, later on because you have people enter the transfer portal during or after spring practice. But those are going to be really, really late additions that are going to have to get used to mm-hmm. um, used to your team, used to your playbooks, used to the players and and get integrated into the Colorado system or whatever system they end up going to. So. As it stands right now, Matt Rule and Nebraska have done a fantastic job. I gave them a C grade, and I still think it's a C grade. I mean, it's average. They did okay. They they kept a bunch of players from the from the uh, previous staff's recruiting class, and they added a couple players. It wasn't you know they didn't go above and beyond. They didn't get any five stars. They added another four star, another what two four stars, maybe just one four star. Mm-hmm. Um, but to me, that's you know that's an average class. It's your first year. You did okay. You didn't you didn't go above. You didn't flip. Uh, a five star from a different school. You flipped a three star from Syracuse uh, because your defense, you hired your defensive coordinator from Syracuse. Um, but again, it's okay. You did a good job. You did better than Colorado. We'll see once spring practices begin and when people don't like their spot on the depth chart at whatever school, if Dion can get some backups or potentially, you know, some some previous starters from other schools to go to Colorado and make an impact right away for the Buffaloes. I would have to agree. I think when you look at the thing in totality, I think you would say he did pretty good. Uh, being that um, a one in 11 team finds itself in the middle of the pack. When you thought you were going to get more of an impact, you probably would have thought you'd made a bigger leap and a bigger jump. Yes, I would have to agree. Matt Rule took a took what top 40, a top 40 class mm-hmm. um, and now is in the lower 30s. That's a big jump you know, for Mm -hmm. somebody getting late in the game as well. So I have to give a clap kudos to Matt Rule in that we're also going to see how this plays out and which team is going to come to play and who wins that game. We unfortunately got to take a break. We're going to come back and we're going to continue this conversation with Evan Bland is going to join us on the block. And we're going to continue to talk about some of the winners and losers that he thinks, and we'll continue to dig a little bit deeper. Uh, We'll be right back. This is 93.7 The Ticket, and this is on the block. Thanks for being here. We'll see you in a minute. Right after this. Hey guys, this is Lindsay Teal from Nebraska Golf Team. Imagine golfing the best courses in the world. St. Andrews, Pebble Beach, Southern Hills, the best of the best. You can play those courses and more without ever leaving the city of Lincoln at Double Eagle Golf. Double Eagle has the city's best golf simulators, five high-quality bays that track ball speed, launch angle, club speed, spin rate, and more to give you the most accurate gameplay. Check it out for yourself year-round. Double Eagle Golf, just five minutes from downtown at the Kinetic Sports Complex on West O Street. Ever think of having a career in plumbing or heating? Do you enjoy watching your favorite game in a nice, comfortable space? Taking a shower after a warm day? Well, everyone we serve at Bigger Staff Plumbing, Heating, and Air sure does. If you're interested in a career in plumbing, heating, and air, come join our team where you'll get paid while training. No experience required. Enjoy great pay and benefits in a friendly environment. Call Bigger Staff Plumbing, Heating, and Air at 402-466-8118 or apply online at biggerstaffs.com. Herrick Services takes this time to wish everyone a Merry Christmas and Happy Holiday Season. We're thankful for so many things this year and every year and hope that everyone is able to enjoy time with family and friends during this joyful celebration. This important message comes to you from Bart, Mike, and the folks at Herrick Services, your vending specialist here in Lincoln. Their quality service and expertise has earned them a fine reputation. That's Herrick Services on the air because they care. When you were a kid, Clubs were cool. Robotics club, space club, and stuff like that. But what do adults get? Book clubs and quilting clubs? No, forget that. How about a margarita club? Get to Upside Bar and Lounge and join the best club in town. Ten flavors of margarita, like Maui Wow, Burnt Pineapple, and Mango Tango. Try all ten of them and receive your own souvenir margarita glass. Make it your new Monday night tradition. $4 margaritas and $4 taco baskets. Grab the crew and head on over. Monday nights or any night. Upside Bar and Lounge at 29th and Pine Lake. Steve's Garage Doors and Services is hiring. They are looking for a garage door installation and service technician with a clean driving record. Experience is not required as they will train for the positions. However, mechanical aptitude is required. If you want to come be a part of a small business where your family, not just an employee, call Steve's Garage Doors and Services today to apply at 402-480-2840. That's 402-480-2840. Steve's Garage Doors and Services. 
Action Plumbing, Heating, Air, and Electric is the call I make when I have a need for plumbing services. Whether it's for my home or office, if I need a repair to a water heater, softener, or even my garbage disposal, I know I can count on Action to help. In one simple call, their amazing customer service team promptly schedules a service call, often getting to my needs within a day. Action delivers honest quality services we can count on. To learn more, visit actionlincoln.com. Life-changing research doesn't just take place in outer space. It's also happening right here in Nebraska, and you could play a key role. Solarion, one of the world's leading clinical research organizations, needs healthy adults who are 19 years old and older for a research opportunity. If you qualify, you could earn up to $500 a day for time and travel. Overnight stays may be required. To learn more, call Solarion at 866-213-2965 or visit helpresearch.com forward slash 500. Working at Continental in Lincoln isn't a job, it's a career. And right now they've raised wages again and they're hiring for production operators at $24.11 per hour, which grows to $28.27 per hour within three years. Skilled trade positions now start at $32.76 per hour with opportunities to make more based on certifications. Continental also has salary jobs available and great benefits, plus medical and prescription costs at very low premiums. Dental, vision, and life insurance are offered at no premium cost to the associates with increased bonuses and vacation for new hires. To learn more or to apply, go to continental-jobs.com with keyword Lincoln. Come work at Continental today. Hey guys, Nick Sadert here, and I want to tell you about my friends at Spine and Sports Chiropractic. I experienced a herniated disc in my lower back a few years ago, and thanks to the folks at Spine and Sports, I got back to feeling 100%. At Spine and Sports, they use the active release technique, which involves the soft tissue and can alleviate headaches, shoulder pain, plantar fasciitis, and more. What I like most about the ART method is that your doctor will construct a plan that fits your needs because the technique is not a cookie cutter approach. Allow Spine and Sports Chiropractic to help you feel better. Set up your appointment today by giving them a call at 402. 402- 261-6841. In every office, there's two types of people. There are those who bring in bagels and those who eat the bagels that someone else brought in. Everybody likes the first person. Be that first person. Weekday mornings at 7.30, you have a chance to win a business box of bagels from Bagels and Joe. All you have to do is shut up Sipple. Two questions for you, two for Sip. Win and the bagels are yours. Lose, well, you don't want to lose. You lost Monday, you lost Wednesday, you're a loser. Shut up Sipple. Weekday mornings at 7.30, brought to you by Bagels and Joe. Back to On the Block with Strick and Nate on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Joining us on the block right now is Evan Bland from the Omaha World Herald. Evan, how are you doing today, man, on the eve as we approach a weekend of Christmas? A lot of people are getting geared up, but it's absolutely freezing cold outside. Thank you for taking your time out of your, I know, you know, busy day out of all the stuff that's going on with bowl games, recruiting, all these things happening out there, man. We appreciate you joining us on the block today. Yeah, you got it, Strick. Thanks for having me in on a Friday. And it is cold. I, we, we were at the, the signing day press conference on Wednesday, and I had to chisel my car out at the end of the night. Like, there was some sick ice out there. So hopefully people are driving safe. But, uh, yeah, yeah it, it's crazy stuff. Yeah. So some of the stuff we've been talking about, uh, Evan, and, and I, I would love to get your thoughts and your wisdom on this, is we've been talking about some of the uh, recruiting rankings, the winners and losers, who we thought was out there. We've been totally intrigued by what has been going on with Alabama landing seven uh, five-star recruits, just totally revamping. They don't even care what happened to people jumping in the transfer portal. They're like, that's all right. We got a whole another treasure trove of people coming in. Uh, talked a little bit about who we thought was uh, the winner and loser out of the, uh, the rule and Deion Sanders, uh, uh, the expectations of those coming late to the party getting in, getting involved, and how well they did. And uh, so we wanted to ask you a little bit about your thoughts of who you have as some of the winners and losers. And I do want to talk about one specific after you do address it, and that's Texas. Go ahead. Well, yeah, I mean, I I think you have a lot of the the familiar suspects and and names out there. I mean, Alabama's always up there, and Ohio State's always up there. We had 
they had a little bit of drama, right, that Nebraska fans would know about with Dylan Raiola uh, decommitting as the number one overall recruit in that 24 class. But they're they're locking in, um, you know, near the top as you would expect. I think Michigan caught my eye uh, from a transfer perspective. Um, you know, everyone knows around here knows about Ernest Hausman heading out there, but they really closed strong. If you look at their portal additions filling up uh, any potential holes that they have, they closed their high school recruiting well too. And that's always been a program that's been, you know, pretty strong development program. Uh, but it just it seems like in the wake of their success the last couple of years, they've really found some momentum too. So, you know, it, it's amazing how much the recruiting calendar has changed in the last four years, right? You think back to 2017 um, and, it, and, and Nebraska, I think, had like more than a dozen signing day decisions in February. I mean, that's just, that's how different it's become. And, and, and you know, it, it feels a little bit different now, I think, too, because if you miss out on a guy, um, free agency is going to roll around again in a year and you don't know how coaching changes are going to affect things and, and, and things like that. So I, while it's certainly true that recruiting stars matter and that the teams that recruit the best are the ones that are typically at the top of the college football playoff, I think it's also true that it's sort of just become uh, one component of that success now, right? You, you compare college football to the NFL, um, high school recruiting would be the draft and then the, the portal would be free agency. So you have to do both well now. Um, I think Nebraska is getting there, but certainly the teams that have been winning, uh, you can tell there's a lot of momentum as they continue on as well. Absolutely. Great stuff, Evan. Uh, again, we have Evan Bland from the Omaha World Herald joining us on the block right now. Listen, um, there could be a little controversy going on. Texas has happened to do pretty good. I mean, they're pretty excited probably about what they've been able to do. I think their first, uh, they landed the first in the, in the big, big 12 as far as their recruiting is going. But there could be a quarterback controversy going on down there. Uh, how do you think that will shake out? And who do you think would be the best man in that, in that running between Arch Manning and Quinn Ewers? Yeah. I mean, Ewers is a guy who's already moved around a little bit uh, because of the, you know, different quarterback competitions at different places and, and Arch Manning, if you believe some of the reports, I mean, he's, he's getting some heavy NIL investment as you would expect down there at Texas and, and you think back to his commitment to the Longhorns that sort of registered as a bit of a surprise at that time that he would uh, go that way over some more maybe traditional SEC schools and things like that but you know again it's it's so much different than it was even four years ago where you would have said man uh, these guys are going to be loaded at that spot you're going to maybe try to find a way to to get them both onto the field a little bit and I think you've just sort of gotten to the point where you're going to have that competition. It's going to play out. And the guy who doesn't win it, um, and I would put my money on Manning over the long term uh, for a number of reasons, but uh, the guy who doesn't win it is going to have an opportunity somewhere else, whether that's at another Power 5 school or, or at a different place. Um, you know, you look at just the trends of the portal, um, uh, and, and quarterbacks are as transient as any of them, moving around, looking for opportunities, of course, there's just one uh, one guy can be on the field holding the ball at the same time, and that's uh, unique to that position. So uh, it's a good problem to have, right? If you're Texas, you you want that problem where you have a couple high profile quarterbacks battling it out. But I think the bigger challenge becomes keeping one of them. And, and if you're Texas, you hope somebody takes off and makes it sort of a clear cut decision. Hey, Evan. So Nebraska, you're, you're speaking on the transfer portal. So I'm going to ask you about the Nebraska's transfer class, which uh, according to 24 seven ranks is the 35th class. Um, but many people have said that it's it's one of the better transfer classes this offseason. Um, and today they add the talents of a three star offensive tackle out of Arizona State, Ben Scott, um, who kind of has I don't know if blessing is the right word, but kind of has the the uh, the go ahead from Dominic Riola as, as a guy that he helped down at Arizona state uh, go from tackle to center. Um, what say you on Nebraska's transfer class and, and exactly what are they getting with, with the guys that are coming in? Well, Scott, first of all, uh, I, I think maybe only behind Jeff Sims, the quarterback from Georgia tech, I think Ben Scott's a, a very important addition. I mean, you look at just the brief history of Nebraska in this, era of the transfer portal where you can uh, move freely and you don't have to sit out for a year. Uh, you know, Scott really is the first proven power five offensive lineman to pick Nebraska. And it just so happens, like you mentioned, he goes from tackle to center last season. He has a connection with uh, Dominic Riola, Donovan Riola, 
His mom uh, happens to be from Columbus, Nebraska, so he has a connection to the state. Um, you know, he, he's going to play center, and that's a spot that you just kind of wondered what that was going to be like with Trent Hickson moving on. Uh, they had Ethan Piper who'd taken some snaps, and they had – uh, you know, Justin Evans Jenkins was a freshman, but you didn't think maybe that that was something he was ready to jump right into. So instead, you bring in a guy who's started 28 games with a Pac-12 school, uh, who, who's already sort of looking ahead to the draft in a year or two, wanting to get better. Uh, that was a major addition, but you, you kind of go through the rest of it. I think Sims, uh, you know, you could have, you, we, have, we could have a conversation about the quarterback competition into the spring. I think that's really fascinating with what Sims can do. Um, he's, he's clearly, um, you know, somebody who is in that mix, I think, right away. And then beyond that, you have a lot of, I think, if, if nothing else, quality depth guys. I mean, Elijah Judy uh, was a highly touted defensive lineman who came over from Texas A&M. He hasn't really had his big chance. Uh, the, the two Florida defenders, Chief Borders uh, at linebacker and Corey Collier at safety, kind of the same deal. Those guys have been special teams guys. Uh, you look at their offers out of high school, there were some there was some major interest in those two as well. And then, uh, you know, the kind of the signing day surprise was Josh Fleeks, the, the running back receiver who came over from Baylor, who played under Matt Rule back in 2018 and 2019. He kind of reminds me a little bit of, uh, if you remember Trey Neal back here at Nebraska in 2018, he was the, the safety who had played under Scott Frost at UCF and really kind of helped with that transition in the locker room. I think Fleeks is a, an interesting sort of comparison as a guy who knows what that coaching staff is all about, he can sort of speak to that in the locker room. And it's a pretty powerful message that he would transfer uh, to Nebraska after spending his career at Baylor, just because of how much he believes in those guys. So it's not a huge transfer class to this point. Of course they can add to that um, before classes start in January, and then they can add to it in May too. Uh, if you want to bring in somebody over the summer, but I think at this point they added some depth and some quality pieces for sure. So, Evan, you, you were just talking about, you know, Nebraska adding uh, to the speed element of this team with the transfers and and with a lot of the freshmen that they have coming in. What is the difference between the uh, the speed aspect that Matt Rule is going with and the speed aspect that Scott Frost and his his coaching staff were going with when they first got here? Yeah, it's a good question because they did uh, target speed in their own way. Uh, I think they, they targeted uh, specifically in the South, too. You saw a lot of Florida guys come in uh, early on in their tenure at Nebraska. You remember they had a lot of what they called duck bar guys, uh, kind of short, um, scatty type guys who could, uh, you know, maybe make defenders miss a little bit. And, and I, I think the, the resume or the blueprint, blueprint with Matt rule has been track speed and verified speed guys who, who run the 200 meters and who have laser times and who you can really verify uh, that they have that straight line speed. And then you can teach maybe some more of the football skills to them. I think, you know, you look at the players that Nebraska brought in the last four or five years, there were a lot of high three stars, low four star guys, and they, they didn't make it for a variety of reasons. But I think, and Matt Rule spoke to this uh, at his press conference on Wednesday, a lot of times those guys uh, that are higher rated are, are doing it on the strength of maybe stronger sophomore or junior years. And you look at some of the players that, that Nebraska brought in this cycle, like Bryce Turner or Jalen Lloyd, these are guys who uh, have that verified track speed, who maybe are a little bit of late bloomers, like they weren't necessarily dominant high school football players as sophomores or juniors. And so... I think there's a little bit more of a raw element to it. Um, I think they they put more of an emphasis on sort of the intangible side of things too. You know, what's a guy made of? What can this guy be in three or four years? I, I, you know, that's been another thing you that's been a common theme with assistants and with Matt Rule is not just what are these guys like now, but what can they be down the line? So I think there's more projecting, um, and, and there's definitely a deep confidence, almost an irrational confidence that they can make these guys better, uh, even if the numbers don't necessarily bear it out right now. One last question for you, Evan. Um, I think I think one of the biggest surprises for me has been uh, li former Liberty coach who has brought in some talented players in his first recruiting class down there in Auburn for the Tigers. Because I'm I, me being born in Auburn um, in Opelika, right there down the road, watching Bo Jackson. I've always been an Auburn fan. But him doing what he has been able to do um, 
bringing in what he's been able to bring on his first season coming out of Liberty there at Auburn has been pretty much a surprise, a top 20 recruiting class at 17 right now. How, you know, how do you view that? Well, yeah, I mean, I guess I can tell you, I don't follow Auburn recruiting super close, but yeah, yeah. I mean, if you're a, a top 20, top 20 recruiting class, uh, you know, with, with a new coach and, and, and on the shortened time. Yes. That's, yes. that's definitely impressive, right? Like it's, it was one thing, four years ago to do it when you had until February to build it out. Maybe you could flip somebody and that sort of thing, but to do it in a matter of a few weeks and to get guys in quickly and to be organized, like we, it's a similar challenge to what Nebraska has. Is, yeah. has a couple of weekends. You have to rely on previous relationships. You have to have, uh, you know, people that will vouch for you, that sort of thing. And, and so, yeah, I mean, Auburn in a lot of ways is similar to Nebraska. They've gone through a lot of coaching, uh, coaching changes and, uh, their fan base has a certain standard that they expect. And so, um, yeah, for, for them to, to get off that kind of start under freeze is, is awfully impressive. Man, Evan Bland, that's what we wanted to hear, man. Just you to break it down and give us a little insight, a lot of wisdom. Evan Bland out of the Omaha World Herald. Check him out. You can find him there, all of his content, all of his stuff there. Evan, we thank you for joining us. Merry Christmas to you, my friend. Have a wonderful weekend. And we always hope to have you back. Thanks, guys. All right. There he is. Evan Bland joining us on the block. We have to take a break right now. Great stuff. Rico, what you think, man? Evan Bland on fire, yeah? That was fantastic. He knows exactly what he's talking about. You know, hey, no more than I do. That's why we <laughs> ask him the questions. That's why we ask him all the questions. Absolutely. Uh, we have to take a quick break. Again, you can hit us on the Sauter Hammond text line. We would love to hear from you as well. Try to call in next half. We're going to definitely take a call or two, so be on the listen out for that. This is on the block. 93.7 The Ticket, the ticketfm.com. Also, tap in on the app, the ticketfm.com. You can find us there and all the great content that we have. We'll be right back after these messages. Your Christmas list changes a lot as you get older. Dreams of video games, remote control cars, and baseball gloves turn into dreams of shoes. You know, practical things. Brown's Shoe Fit is the king of shoes in Lincoln, with brands like Sorel, Ugg, and Hey Dudes to make you fashionable and comfortable. Get two pairs of Hey Dudes for $100, and buy three, get one free on Smart Wool Socks for the ultimate stocking stuffer. And don't forget a reliable gift card for that hard-to-buy-for person in your life. Brown's Shoe Fit at 66 and Q in Lincoln. This year, give the gift of delicious food, incredible service, and a lasting memory with the Pillar Restaurant Group gift card. Our holiday gift card special is back. When you purchase a $50 gift card, receive a $5 bonus card, or purchase a $100 gift card to receive a $20 bonus card. These cards can be used at all Pillar Restaurant Group locations, including Venue Restaurant and Lounge, Piedmont Bistro, Cactus, and all Lincoln Good Sense subs. Available for purchase at any of our concepts or online at prgnebraska.com. Steve's Garage Doors and Services is hiring. They are looking for a garage door installation and service technician with a clean driving record. Experience is not required as they will train for the positions. However, mechanical aptitude is required. If you want to come be a part of a small business where your family, not just an employee, call Steve's Garage Doors and Services today to apply at 402-480-2840. That's 402-480-2840. Steve's Garage Doors and Services. Wall-to-wall wine and spirits is now open in Lincoln. Shop our expansive collection of wine, beer, spirits, and cigars at 5040 North 27th Street. From top shelf liquor to crowd favorite beer, Wall-to-Wall Wine and Spirits has a beverage for every taste and every budget. Plus, join our loyalty program to earn rewards and save on future purchases. Shop Wall-to-Wall Wine and Spirits at 5040 North 27th Street in Lincoln. That's 5040 North 27th Street. Landmark Implement, your local John Deere dealership, is searching for technicians of all skill levels to grow with us. Landmark offers a competitive wage, full benefits package with 100% paid employee health insurance, paid time off, paid parental and bereavement leave, an annual recreation bonus, and a boot and clothing allowance. Landmark offers the latest certified John Deere training so you're up to date with the newest equipment and technology. Interested in becoming a part of the Landmark difference? Apply now at Landmark.careers. Landmark Implement is an equal opportunity employer. Hey guys, this is Lindsay Teal from Nebraska Golf Team. Imagine golfing the best courses in the world. St. Andrews, Pebble Beach, Southern Hills, 
the best of the best. You can play those courses and more without ever leaving the city of Lincoln at Double Eagle Golf. Double Eagle has the city's best golf simulators, five high quality bays that track ball speed, launch angle, club speed, spin rate, and more to give you the most accurate gameplay. Check it out for yourself year round. Double Eagle Golf, just five minutes from downtown at the Kinetic Sports Complex on West O Street. The best way to learn about Southeast Community College is to visit and you can check out our spaces before you visit in person with a virtual campus tour. An opportunity to see our campuses in Beatrice, Lincoln, and Milford as you learn about our programs and areas of study. There are virtual tours of our learning centers too. We can even take you on a personalized virtual tour. Learn more on our website, southeast.edu slash visit SCC. SCC, your path to possible. Rosie Sports Bar and Grill. Open for lunch and dinner at 10th and P or at 1501 Center Park Road. Life-changing research doesn't just take place in outer space. It's also happening right here in Nebraska, and you could play a key role. Solarion, one of the world's leading clinical research organizations, needs healthy adults who are 19 years old and older for a research opportunity. If you qualify, you can earn up to $500 a day for time and travel. Overnight stays may be required. To learn more, call Solarion at 8 Six six one three twenty nine sixty five, or visit helpresearch.com forward slash 500. 93.7 The Ticket, Fox KFXL Weather. Sponsored by John Henry's Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning. Wind chill warnings remain in effect as northwest winds will gust near 40 today and we only see an afternoon high of around 6. Wind chill values will be well below zero for the majority of the day. A few clouds move in tonight. We'll see an overnight low of around 5 below. Try to warm things up a bit tomorrow with a high of 15. I'm meteorologist Tim Wright for 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Back to On the Block with Strick and Nate on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. We're back on the block. At this particular time, we would normally have shootout with Strick, but we are not going to do that today. We are in the mood of giving. We're in the spirit of giving. It's Christmas we're, Eve, it's Eve, Eve, Eve. So we're going to give away the stricken, and it's going to come from the text line because we know the text line sometimes don't always get some love. We can also take it from the stream, whether you're on Facebook, Twitch, Twitter, or Facebook, um, uh, also YouTube. If you're on any of those, according to this particular th- uh, 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 rating, three, four, seven sports only, okay? We're giving away the stricken to the first person who can text in on the Sauter Hammond text line or Facebook, uh, YouTube, Twitch, or Twitter. Question is this. Who and where do... No, no, just where. Where are the (laughs) Huskers rated in the recruiting... What am I trying to say, Rico? Say it for me. Where, uh, According to this particular recruiting site, 24-7 Sports, that's where we're going to go with, where is Nebraska... Ranked. ranked. There you go. Where are they ranked? Not the composite. The not not the composite rank. The rank on twenty four seven because the composite takes all of them. I just want twenty four seven. It looks like we have a winner. Just that quick. You see, Henry. Enrico Henry Henry Henry, Henry the first one. See, everybody keeps giving the composite rank. The composite rank is twenty eight. But Henry was listening. You got to got to listen. According to 24-7, not the composite, they are ranked 31st. 31st. Henry, make sure you uh, call into the station, 402-464-5685 on the Honda Lincoln Hotline. Leave your information. You are the one that is winning the stricken today from Buffalo Wings and Rico. Rings. Wings and? And rings. There you go. You're gonna win the stricken today. Um, so that's it, man. That's it's that's pretty easy. But but listen, a couple more questions before we get to the second half, uh, Rico. Um, what do you think about the Sooners, Oklahoma? 
They Man. seem to be struggling. I, I feel bad for them because you lose Lincoln Riley, and then you bring on who you think is a you know who's a tremendous defensive guru and 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 coach. And Venables. In 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 Venables, and they just can't seem to 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 get get it right. If you've ever watched that movie, what's that movie? Uh, Rico Life. There was a guy on Life they called Can't Get Right. Right now they just seem <laughs> to can't get that. right. <laughs> well, I mean, they couldn't get right on the field, but in terms of recruiting, they've done a damn good job. I think they're sixth in the country, other fifth in the country right now in recruiting rankings. They got three five stars, uh, a quarterback, the number four quarterback in the nation, a safety, the one that decommitted and decommitted from Notre Dame, then decommitted from Oregon, then committed to to Oklahoma, who is the number two safety in the nation, and then a edge rusher who's the number four. Uh, uh, edge rusher in the nation so five, four or five three five stars numbers are hard today it's a lot just thrown around three mm-hmm. five stars including two on the defensive side which is something that uh yeah. oklahoma doesn't really do all that often i think the last time they did that me and nick were talking about it. i think it was 2016 was the last time they got a five star on the defensive side five stars on the offensive side they're golden they do that you know damn near every year but three five stars in this year's class, good for fifth in the nation. We'll see if it if it turns into production on the field because you know, as you said, they lose Lincoln Riley, who ends up losing two games uh, in his in his first year at USC, and they bring in Brent Venables, who they thought was going to be the savior. And I mean, the, those first couple of games, I mean, that game against Nebraska made it look like Oklahoma was going to be untouchable, and then they kind of fell off a cliff. They they lose big, or not lose big, but they they lose uh, to Kansas State, and they can't get right after that. So. Yeah, we'll see if, if this fifth rank recruiting class in the nation turns into anything on the field. But right now, Oklahoma and Brent Venables, I, I would say they're looking up. Um, they're they're look they're trending in the right direction, trending in the right direction. I'm sure those though everybody is hoping that they get things right, especially before they make that transition down to the SEC. You know, they, you don't want to go down there uh, with a can't get right mentality. You want to come no. down there stacked and packed and ready to go because it's going to be tough for them in their transition. Also, uh, yeah, you're going we'll to be come- going against Alabama and that number one. Right. <laughs> exactly. Uh, with that in mind, we're going to come back. We're going to take a break right now. Um, we're going to come back and talk about some of the bowl games that have been going on. And also some of the games that you're up uh, looking to uh, forward to watching over the weekend as the bowl game, really bowl games begin to really start to, you know, get going. Yeah, they really oh, started yeah. to get going. Good so. The good ones are getting going now. Yeah, it's we're gonna watching, be fun. We're watching uh, Louisiana Lafayette and Houston on the TV in here, and Louisiana Lafayette's looking pretty good. They're up 10 nothing on Houston in the second quarter right now. Which is huge. Which is huge for them. Raise your Cajuns. So. I, want, I want the Cougars. Come on. Dana <laughs> Holderson, Houston, let's go. Yeah, so we got, we're going to come back. We're going to talk a little bit about some of those things and some of the wins and losses and some of the thoughts – and uh, we always love to hear from you as well. 402-464-5685 uh, on the Sauter uh text line. And uh, we'll be back right after this on 93.7 The Ticket on the block. Action Plumbing, Heating, Air, and Electric is the call I make when I have a need for plumbing services. Whether it's for my home or office, if I need a repair to a water heater, softener, or even my garbage disposal, I know I can count on Action. In one simple call, their amazing customer service team promptly schedules a service call, often getting to my needs within a day. Action delivers honest quality services we can count on. To learn more, visit actionlincoln.com. People first is more than a nice sentiment. At American Senior Benefits, it's the mission. If you're ready for a career where you can truly put your customers' needs ahead of everything else, this is for you. American Senior Benefits is one of the leading senior market insurance product distributors in the country, and they're looking for high-energy applicants with strong communication skills. Enjoy on-the-job training, a fun work environment, and unlimited income potential. Visit asbmidwest.com to learn more. American Senior Benefits. 93.7 The Ticket. Fox KFXL Weather. Sponsored by John Henry's Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning. Wind chill warnings remain in effect as northwest winds will gust near 40 today. And we only see an afternoon high of around 6. 
Wind chill values will be well below zero for the majority of the day. A few clouds move in tonight. We'll see an overnight low of around five below. Try to warm things up a bit tomorrow with a high of 15. I'm meteorologist Tim Wright for 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Gaina Trucking is hiring CDL Class A and B drivers. Gaina Trucking guarantees a 40-hour work week year-round, and their strong team culture makes it not a job, but a career. Gaina Trucking offers health, vision, and dental insurance, 401k with company match, an employee assistance program, and other bonus programs. Build a better career today with great team culture at Gaina Trucking. Learn more and apply today at GainaTrucking.com. This is Lincoln's home for sports talk on the FM dial. Also online at theticketfm.com. On the internet. KNTK FM Firth, 93.7 The Ticket. Landmark Implement, your local John Deere dealership, is searching for technicians of all skill levels to grow with us. Landmark offers a competitive wage, full benefits package with 100% paid employee health insurance, paid time off, paid parental and bereavement leave, an annual recreation bonus, and a boot and clothing allowance. Landmark offers the latest certified John Deere training, so you're up to date with the newest equipment and technology. Interested in becoming a part of the Landmark difference? Apply now at Landmark.Careers. Landmark Implement is an equal opportunity employer. Acres, your John Deere dealer, is offering year-end blowout savings on in-stock 2022 compact tractors and mowers. Make quick work of chores around your acreage and save over $4,000 on select John Deere compact tractors equipped with a loader and rear blade. Or save up to $1,000 on select 2022 John Deere z tracks and lawn tractors. Visit your local Acres store or acres.com to get these great discounts. Acres, solutions for every field. Discounts available on in-stock units while supplies last. Did you know that the U.S. has added over 1,100 new breweries in the last 18 months? Learn more by shopping at Myers Cork and Bottle, 13th and South, and by tuning in to Thirsty Thursdays with Kevin Myers, because sports are better with a drink in your hand and a friend at your side. This year, give the gift of delicious food, incredible service, and a lasting memory with the Pillar Restaurant Group gift card. Our holiday gift card special is back. When you purchase a $50 gift card, receive a $5 bonus card or purchase a $100 gift card to receive a $20 bonus card. These cards can be used at all Pillar Restaurant Group locations, including Venue Restaurant and Lounge, Piedmont Bistro, Cactus, and all Lincoln Good Sense subs. Available for purchase at any of our concepts or online at prgnebraska.com. The best way to learn about Southeast Community College is to visit. And you can check out our spaces before you visit in person with a virtual campus tour. An opportunity to see our campuses in Beatrice, Lincoln, and Milford as you learn about our programs and areas of study. There are virtual tours of our learning centers, too. We can even take you on a personalized virtual tour. Learn more on our website, southeast.edu slash visit SCC. SCC, your path to possible. This is On the Block with Strick and Nate. Nebraska Basketball Hall of Famer and nine-year NBA vet, Eric Strickland. Strickland for three! And you're going to go out of here as the Big Eight tournament champion. And hokey homer turned Husker, Nathan Brennan. Everyone knows that I'm the smartest person here. Coming at you live from the heart of Lincoln, America. On air and online at theticketfm.com. Brought to you by Mary Ellen's Food for the Soul. This is is on the block with Strick and Nate. Welcome back to On the Block. Me and my partner of the day, Nate Brennan, would usually be here. Nate Brennan is on vacation out in York, Nebraska, but my partner, Bellevue West alumni, Thunderbird hey. in the house. T-Birds fly together, baby. We, we fly together. Flock squad, that's what we do. Can Rico. you really call York a vacation? Oh, well, I don't uh, think anywhere in Nebraska is a vacation right now. Oh, it's, it's iceberg as it is out there right now. It is absolutely uh, freezing. We hope that everybody is safe and is okay. Hey, I happened to get out today, Rico, and I saw about seven, eight cars that were, you know. Yeah, no, hard pass on no all that. Up. It is currently, so, I mean, it's a heat wave now in Lincoln. It's six degrees. <laughs> uh, feels like negative 14, so it's it's like 20 degrees warmer than it was this morning. Right. <laughs> That's well, crazy. 20, it is 20 crazy. Degree swing, a 20 degree swing and it's still negative. No. Why? Why do I live here? 
Well, that's a question that we all have to ask ourselves. Why did I come back from Florida and uh, and and dive back in? It's because I love the people of Nebraska. Nebraska exactly. is home for me. That's why I, I stay. I, still, I love the people, but why do I still live here? Yeah, man, absolutely. <laughs> Uh, great conversations going on today. We're going to get into some uh, just some updates, some things that are going on in the bowl season, talk about some of the games that are happening right now. Game on right now is the University of Louisiana um, at uh, Lafayette. Houston. Yeah, Lafayette. Lafayette Houston. against Houston. Uh, that game is 13 to zero right now in the second half, just under seven minutes to go. Um, there's been some good games. A lot of these games have been pretty close. UAB and Miami, Ohio, 24 to 20. Uh, mm-hmm. Troy and UTSA were good. I really thought it. UTSA was going to get it done. I did too. I did too. Damn, I thought they were going to pull it off. It was tough. Uh, but I did say Troy would win that. I think on my record, if I if, if Nate was around, he's got the paper. I, I think my record mm-hmm. would be pretty good. Uh, Oregon you, State you think, blew you, you the. Think you know some things. I think I, I think I called a few of these things. I, t- I, I did. I did call the uh, the Fresno State game, and the reason okay. I called that one is because I said right now, um, Devontae Smith and David Carr they need a win, and I mm-hmm. said they need some help. They need something they can clap about right now because I know they are some of that they, good juju. Yeah, some of that good mojo they needed that, and so I did call that one. Um, some great games out there again. BYU and SMU got after it. Mm. Um, that was a that was a pretty tough one. But Oregon Boys State, State blew the Texas door. got after it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The only really big blowouts was Louisville, Cincinnati. That was a surprise. I will yes. say that was a surprise. I did not expect that. I don't think I called that one. I actually thought Cincinnati would win that game. But the one that surprised me the most was Oregon State, Florida. I, I, I there's no way. I, I guess they just laid down. They just was yeah, like, like, you I, know. Like, I understand so. that Oregon State is ranked and Florida wasn't. And I guess Florida, I mean, not I guess. Florida did lose a lot of players to the transfer portal <clears throat> before that game even started. And they didn't have their quarterback, Anthony Richardson, who had declared for the NFL draft. But, yeah, I mean, they saved their uh, longest streak of not getting shut out with a field goal late in the fourth quarter. <laughs> When they were already down thirty to nothing, they were like, "Ah, let's just kick the field goal so we don't get shut out." Shut out, or you know, and keep the streak going for like I don't know what it's like, like three hundred plus games or something like that. Yeah, Um, which is impressive, but just a sad, sad appearance by the Florida Gators in the bowl game in the uh, SRS Distribution Las Vegas Bowl. Absolutely, and listen, the SEC has a chance for redemption a little bit later at Raymond James Stadium in Tampa, Florida, at six thirty on ESPN. Um, Wake Forest, an ACC team that got off to a tremendous start early in the season, uh, kind of fell off the wagon a little bit late, uh, had some tough losses, had some tough ones with, that they played close, but ended up coming up short. And then Missouri, in like manner, uh, out of the SEC, in the Union Home Mortgage Gasparilla Bowl, are mm. going to be playing at about 6.30 this evening. And then we're going to start ramping up, wrapping up, uh, ramping up for some of the better games uh, to come uh, just after Christmas. Saturday on the 24th, you have the East Post Hawaii Bowl where Middle Tennessee State and San Diego what? State will be joining and in, 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 in battling out on the gridiron. Yeah, and I don't want to go to that one. That's uh, a bowl game I'd like to go to. That's the one you uh, – yes, absolutely. Yes. I mean, if, this and the Bahamas Bowl. Let me go to those ones. I don't <laughs> care for lower-level bowls. I want to go to the Bahamas, and I want to go to Hawaii. I don't care. <laughs> we'll cover those. We'll cover those, right? Yeah. Like, hey, I don't know. I don't care if Nebraska's not playing. I'm a. I've always been a big San Diego State fan, and I know Strick's always been a big Middle Tennessee State fan. So I think we should go to Hawaii and cover that game. <laughs> Absolutely. There you go. Here's one though I'm interested in seeing, kind of just kind of peeking at, but not necessarily just watching in totality. Is Tuesday on December 27th is the Camellia Camellia Bowl. Camellia Bowl. I don't know how to pronounce it, but um, Georgia Southern. I really want to see. After Georgia beat the beat the brakes off of us, I want to see how they they handle themselves in this bowl game against Buffalo. I, that, that's really the only reason they're, I want to watch that game. They're favored by three and a half, and that game's at eleven a.m. on on ESPN again Tuesday, December twenty seventh. If if anybody wants to watch that, I'll be watching it here in the studio. Actually, I might turn the TV on and catch that one uh, during. Uh, I think that's during the Captain Show. So uh, yeah, I watched some Georgia Southern football, and uh, I just want to go back to one game that you said the uh, game later today, Missouri. Um, they lost their best receiver to the transfer portal. He is transferring to Georgia. So mm. they're going to be without their best receiver, who was a uh, top 10 recruit, I believe, or a top 10 wide receiver in last year's class, maybe two years ago's class. Yeah. But uh, 
a, a top ranked receiver leaving Missouri and headed to Georgia. So Missouri is going to be without him for this, this bowl game that they play. Um, but another one that you might want to watch that Tuesday, the guaranteed rate bowl, Wisconsin will be their first game. Um, maybe with their interim, uh, their, their new head coach. I don't know if Jim Leonard's going to keep coaching that one, uh, or if they're going to have, uh, Luke Fickle take over and, and have him coaching that one. But Wisconsin takes on Oklahoma State. That's the one I'm, I'm, I'm excited that's about. That's the, that's the late game that day, 9-15 on ESPN, Tuesday, December 27th. That one is going to be interesting. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to watching that one. Uh, there's no question about uh, – I'll be rooting for the Big Ten on that one as well. Oh, come on. Uh, hey, but the reason is, is we lost to recruit a top state – I wish – Rule could have got here in time to really got get in on the uh, uh, the quarterback recruit out of Gretna, um, uh, Zane Flores. Zane Flores. I, I wish we could have really had a chance to get in on that. So uh, I'm really hoping that Wisconsin beats the brakes off of him since he jumped <laughs> jumped ship and left. Uh, but that's okay. But here's the one that was really surprising to me. And Sutter him in text line. Uh, let me know your thoughts on this one because this is this is something that they always do in this particular bowl game. 402-464-5685. And I'm talking about Air Force Falcons are continuously getting 10 wins. And it always seems to come in this particular game is when they get it. The Lockheed Martin Armed Forces Bowl. The Man. Air Force Falcons beat the brakes off of the Baylor Bears. And they did it in physical fashion. Remember when Nebraska fans wanted to hire Dave Aranda? Yes. And now look at him, six and seven at Baylor with a 30 to seven, 30 to 15 loss to Air Force in the Armed Forces Bowl. And I understand that Air Force has been pretty solid these last couple of years, getting 10 wins in a couple seasons here and there. But look, you're at Baylor. You should not lose to Air Force. I don't care how good Air Force, Army, Navy are in whatever year. If you're a power five team, I, 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 maybe I'm wrong. I don't think you should be losing to a, a, um, armed forces uh universe armed forces uh academy like on top of that it it just seems like they so the reason that they run some of the offenses that they run those triple options that they run is they they don't get the same type of athletes that a baylor that a a nebraska an ohio state oklahoma would get because of the the four-year commitment after you graduate to whatever armed force academy you're at so they're not yeah. going to get the they're not going to get the six foot eight, three hundred and fifty pound uh, defensive tackle who's going to just eat up space and, and move people around. They're going to have to settle for a, you know, a, a six foot, two hundred and fifty pound defensive tackle or something like that. And, and that's why they run the type of offenses and defenses that they run is because they're not going to get the same type of athletes. And for a, a team like Baylor to get their doors blown off like they did, that just that doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah. On top of that, they don't do NIL. So nope. you've got you've got the commitment, you've got the NIL, and you don't have the top tier talent. And yet collectively, that goes to show me that as a collective group, if you buy in, if you're disciplined, if you if you uh, stay true to your assignments and you do what you're supposed to do, you can beat, you know, teams on a given day or a night, you know, if, if things go right for you, right? So that's the way I look at it in that in that form. But Rico, a little short story. I I was recruited pretty heavily by the the naval the naval and the uh, Air Force Academy as well. I really? actually was considering going in to be a pilot, and um, one of the you things know, I looked at, I, I had the privilege. Big ass pilot. <laughs> six three is the, that's the limit. Six three <laughs> is the limit. If you go above six three, you can't be a pilot unless yeah, you fly like <laughs> unless you fly like KC KC one thirty fives or you fly the big planes or. Or or the you know C five or, or the C five galaxies or whatever. Yeah, you know, oh, they were like, we have to limit the capacity because we got our pilot here. <laughs> so, but um, I thought about it, man, and then I had the privilege of actually getting a chance to watch the Admiral David Robinson go through the process, Ooh. and and when when I saw David have to forego that time frame, I think they gave him a reprieve. It was supposed to be four, but I think they, they only made him go two. They, they only allowed him to go two, and they, they let him out. But um, when I saw that, I was like, that won't be Stricky. Hard pass. Hard pass. I think, um, I, I, you know, being a good athlete, I was just like, yeah, I don't think that's going to work for Stricky. Um, 
What is the big game that you guys are looking for in the college football playoff? Ooh. Tell me about it. Rico, what about you? Which one are you really interested in seeing in the college football playoff? What, what, which one are you really going to be like in tune and just focused in on the TV on? Which game? Uh, pro I'm probably, I might be alone on this one, especially on our text line, but TCU, Michigan. I think that's actually going to be I you know TCU is a seven and a half point underdog. I think that's going to be a really good game. I think those two teams match up really well with each other. Ohio State and Georgia. I just feel although Georgia is only favored by six and a half, I feel like Georgia's gonna run away with that one. Like Georgia is just far and away the best team out of these four teams in the playoff. Like it doesn't matter who they play, they're gonna run away with it. It doesn't matter if they play Michigan, TCU, Ohio, they're gonna they're gonna run away. It's gonna be just a just a a disgusting game more than likely, but this TCU Michigan game, I'm extremely excited for, especially it being possibly Max Duggan's last game as a TCU Horn Frog and the way that um, they've been able to just squeak by and just find a way mm -hmm. to get wins game after game, although it didn't happen in the Big 12 championship game, just the way that they're able to keep games close and somehow come out with a win, I think is is something that's going to pay dividends if they get into a close game with Michigan because I feel as if Michigan this season has just kind of run over everybody they, they haven't really had the closest of games this season so TCU's ability to keep things close and come out with a win at the end I think is going to pay dividends and I really like the Horn Frogs against Michigan especially without Blake Corum for for uh for the Wolverines yeah I, I I'm agreeing with you I think that's going to be the one uh, that's, uh, uh, you know, that I'm going to be quite interested in watching as well, uh, just to see where they always try to say that TCU physicality, they don't measure up or they don't they don't fit the bill. I don't care what you're saying. Um, Michigan's going to line up and they're just going to say, we're going to pound you. And I want to just see how this TCU with their depth and with their uh, with their speed and so forth and so on, how they're able to measure up against that physicality. Um uh, text line Brad says Ohio State beating Georgia. Whoa! Oh, I don't know about that, man. Is he on I the really Snoop Dogg today? I think he might be. Like I understand that they've gone most of the season without Jackson Smith and Jigba, but he's not going to play in this game. And facing a team like Georgia that has athletes all over the field, uh, unlike Ohio State has seen all year. Look, Georgia's athletes. Against Michigan's athletes, I'm taking Georgia's athletes all day. And Ohio State couldn't do anything against Michigan. The amount of athletes that they have on the field and the fact that Ohio State is down their best receiver, although they have Marvin Harrison Jr., Jackson Smith and Jigba, was their best receiver, was going to be their best receiver. It's, it's going to take a toll on them, and it's going, to be, it's going to be interesting, but I think Georgia just rolls them. Cups Especially how physical they can be. They're, I agree. Michigan Especially on the defensive out, side. Yes, yeah. Michigan out physical to Ohio State. Georgia is more physical than Michigan. I agree. Um, I, I don't I don't see that. But listen, again, they're gonna have to line up. And if the, they if if Ohio, I mean, uh if Georgia in any way begins to overlook or start looking past Ohio State, that's a danger zone. So um I, I don't think Kirby Smart and that crew will, will will allow that to happen. I think he'll have them quite prepared. Um do you think Stetson Bennett uh is, is gonna be, you know, calm, cool, and collective, or is he gonna you know, start smelling himself going into another one this year and, 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 you know, become a mistake haven for the potential of an upset. Now, nah, I think Stetson Bennett with the, the, his track to where he is now is something that will, to me, keep him humble no matter what game he plays and no matter how good and how much people praise him. I think the way that he got to where he is now will always keep him humble. Being a walk on being pretty much told, Hey, you're not good enough. You got to go to a Juco to get better going to that Juco. Then, you know, coming back to the school that your, your dream school and, and, you know, being able to become the starter and win a national championship. I think the, the, the trail that he took will keep him humble and keep him calm, cool and collected, especially again, surrounded by the athletes that he has and having a security blanket like Brock Bowers uh, to toss the rock to, I think will help him immensely against an Ohio state defense that this year hasn't been that great. So listen, <laughs> the uh, text line is, is wild in the day. The text line is Big Ten heavy today. 
Cups mm. were saying, I'm looking forward to Michigan and Ohio State in the championship. And said, you heard it first right here on the block and on the text line. Cupsker uh, off the text line states that. Uh, Brad comes in and says, Ohio State, Michigan, Natty. Wow. What Everybody, are you guys on right now? What are, are you on? I want to know, is everybody putting a parlay on that? Is there going to be a parlay? I, I'm not touching that. <laughs> that is a chance. You are losing money. Oh, Neither wow. one of One of those teams is not going to make it. And it's Ohio State. They're not getting one of these teams is one of its own thing. One of these teams is one of the same. <laughs> hey, now, you, you, gotta be, you gotta be old school to know what I was just doing right there. It's like some old like um a Sesame Street stuff with you know, yeah. Anyway, but anyway, I get you. <laughs> um you got me, Rico. I got you. But but here's the crazy thing: there's some more games that I'm really fired up about, though, right? Kansas State, Alabama. Yes! How did you know, Rico? Are you reading my mind? Because we've talked about this and because you think that Alabama is going to do some, some, some mean things to Kansas State, and I completely disagree. Well, tell me about it. Why do you disagree, sir? Look, Kansas State is, is, is a physical team. They're very well coached. Alabama this year has been very mistake prone. And I'm not talking about, you know, interceptions. I'm talking penalties. They, they've had a bunch of penalties, which is very uncharacteristic of a Nick Saban coach team. I don't know exactly what's going on. Although they're going to have their quarterback and their best defender to, that play in this game, I think Kansas State, with, with everything that's gone on with them, with the ability to, to go up or to, to take an Oklahoma in Manhattan and beat them, and although, you know, we saw Oklahoma wasn't the best team, being able to um, lose to TCU earlier in the season, then come back and beat them in overtime, being able to, to beat a, a Texas team that held their own. Actually, did they lose to Texas? They might have lost to Texas. I don't exactly know uh, what they hold on. Let me look that up real fast. Uh, being able to stick with a Texas team, they ended up losing that one, that that held their own against Alabama, I think is going to to pay dividends uh, against this, this Crimson Tide team. Because, again, very mistake-prone this year. And uh, it's not the same Alabama as it's been in the past. They're still very good. But I think Kansas State, with the physicality that they have and their, you know, we're not scared of anybody uh, mentality, is going to put up a very big fight against Alabama. And I would not be surprised if they come out with the win. Okay, cool, cool. But here's another one that I'm thinking about. At at and the house that Jerry built. Jerry World. I'm looking at Tulane in the green way against mm -hmm. USC. I'm Ooh. really interested to I see. I didn't know that. I didn't know that was a matchup. Yes. The oh. Tulane Green Wave at 11 and 2, 16th ranked Tulane is going to be playing USC with the Heisman Trophy, Caleb Williams led Trojans. I want to see how point. it goes down. USC is a two point favorite. Only. Only two points. Only. Uh, against the best group of five team this year. <laughs> Sign me up for Willie Fritz, man. That's going to be fun. Oh, shoot. This is going to be, be – I'm, I'm going to be excited about that. I'm going to be excited about that. Uh, shout out to the, the text line. Doug on the text line. Yes, I'm coming for you in the new year, sir, on shootout with Strick. We've got to get down with the get down. Um, get down, get down. Uh, how about an extra orange bowl? Uh, there, there was a question. So the ex, on. What no, is the extra, I had to look it up. The extra orange, orange bowl. They're saying that because it's Tennessee versus Clemson. Ooh. Orange team, orange team, orange bowl. Ooh. Hmm. That actually sounds fun. What, what's going on with Hinton Hooker? It would be, he's not going to play. He tore his ACL. He's, he's not playing in that one. It would be a lot more fun if it was Hendon Hooker and DJ Uyunglele was having a good season Oof. and didn't transfer. That would have yeah. been a lot more fun. It's still going to be an interesting matchup. Um, not as fun, but it, it'll be interesting. And yeah, that's gonna be a lot of orange. Does somebody take a chance on Hinton Hooker? Is somebody gonna 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 take a chance on yeah, him? Yeah, unfortunately, he won't be a first rounder like he should have been. Um, he might get picked up in the second or third round just because, especially now with all the 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 medical improvements, his ACL and um, you know, the rehab process, he might be ready at the start of the next NFL season or somewhere towards the beginning of the next NFL season. If a team wants to take a chance on him and uh, see what he's got, although he could also with rookie quarterbacks, if, if a good team takes a chance on him, 
you know, it's a good team that thinks they might just be a quarterback away. A good team takes a chance on him. They sit him down. He sits for the whole year, learns behind whoever they have at quarterback. The next year comes up. They don't have to worry about if they have a bad season. They don't have to worry about drafting a quarterback. They could take a, an offensive lineman or a skill position player to pair with Hendon Hooker, and then you're set. So you're looking at four. You're looking at fourth, fifth round. Yeah, I would. I would think so. Although if somebody reaches on him in the third round, I wouldn't be surprised. The dude has all the talent in the world. Yeah. Yeah, I hope the young I, – I do feel bad in situations that's a lot. like that. Unfortunately, that's a lot of money he's going to miss out on. Yeah, I do. Um, but sometimes you can land in a good situation. I could tell you a place that would probably be excited to, to take a chance, but they may be a little bit leery. Um, you could be looking at San Francisco. You could be looking at Green Bay potentially, maybe. Um, Both of those teams have their quarterbacks of the future. Oh, oh, sh- you think Trey team. Lance – you think Trey Lance – that's uh, what they took him. They took him in. The, they took him second overall, right? I'm not feeling it, bro. He's a top five pick. Yeah. <laughs> Move on. You don't just. You don't just <laughs> to, your, to to a top five pick unless it's Zach Wilson. Well, they did. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I heard y'all talking about that on the last show. Yeah, the, the <laughs> Zach Wilson. Listen. Let's let's do open discussion. We're gonna do some NFL open discussion. I have a couple of questions. On the next segment, we're going to do open discussions. We're going to take calls in the next segment because I want to definitely talk to you guys about a few things. That being some NFL stuff, there's a couple things about some downfalls in the NBA that I want to throw out to you guys. And I want to throw out something about the men and women basketball teams. Stay here. We'll come back on the block right after this. Have some open discussion. We want to hear from you also on the text line. We'll be right back after this. Rashawn Jackson here for Bauer Underground, who has been serving local contractors and utility contractors all across the state since 1997. When you see the black and white trucks, you know the baddest dudes in the business have arrived. Bauer is currently looking for equipment operators, laborers, diesel mechanics, and aerial linemen. Join the brotherhood built on hard work, authentic people, and pedigree of success. Bauer, a family-friendly company who reminds you, don't be ready. Acres, your John Deere dealer, is offering year-end blowout savings on in-stock 2022 compact tractors and mowers. Make quick work of chores around your acreage and save over $4,000 on select John Deere compact tractors equipped with a loader and rear blade. Or save up to $1,000 on select 2022 John Deere Z-Tracks and lawn tractors. Visit your local Acres store or acres.com to get these great discounts. Acres, solutions for every field. Discounts available on in-stock units while supplies last. This year, give the gift of delicious food, incredible service, and a lasting memory with the Pillar Restaurant Group gift card. Our holiday gift card special is back. When you purchase a $50 gift card, receive a $5 bonus card, or purchase a $100 gift card to receive a $20 bonus card. These cards can be used at all Pillar Restaurant Group locations, including Venue Restaurant and Lounge, Piedmont Bistro, Cactus, and all Lincoln Good Sense subs. Available for purchase at any of our concepts or online at prgnebraska.com. Working at Continental in Lincoln isn't a job, it's a career. And right now they've raised wages again and they're hiring for production operators at $24.11 per hour, which grows to $28.27 per hour within three years. Skilled trade positions now start at $32.76 per hour with opportunities to make more based on certifications. Continental also has salary jobs available and great benefits, plus medical and prescription costs at very low premiums. Dental, vision, and life insurance are offered at no premium cost to the associates with increased bonuses and vacation for new hires. To learn more or to apply, go to continental-jobs.com with keyword Lincoln. Come work at Continental today. Did you know that the U.S. has added over 1,100 new breweries in the last 18 months? Learn more by shopping at Myers Cork and Bottle, 13th and South, and by tuning in to Thirsty Thursdays with Kevin Meyer, because sports are better with a drink in your hand and a friend at your side. In today's day and age, people are trying to do more and more projects by themselves. That might be better on the wallet, but it can also lead to painful sounds like this. Ah! Ah! Ow! Poor guy, trying to do wiring all by himself. Let's have another listen. Ah! Ah! It's just not worth it. Don't hurt yourself or make things worse than they are already. For any of your electric needs, call Joe at Ambition Electric today at 402-217-3415 or go to ambitionelectric.com. What does continuing education mean to you? 
At Southeast Community College, it means helping you advance. Whether that's a fundamental course in accounting or marketing to help your business, or helping you become a better leader, SCC can help you take the next step. Financial assistance is available too. Learn more about our business development classes at southeast.edu slash continuing education. SCC, your path to personal and professional development. When you were a kid, clubs were cool. Robotics club, or space club, and stuff like that. But what do adults get? Book clubs and quilting clubs? No, forget that. How about a margarita club? Get to Upside Bar and Lounge and join the best club in town. Ten flavors of margarita like Maui Wow, Burnt Pineapple, and Mango Tango. Try all ten of them and receive your own souvenir margarita glass. Make it your new Monday night tradition. $4 margaritas and $4 taco baskets. Grab the crew and head on over. Monday nights or any night. Upside Bar and Lounge at 29th and Pine Lake. The place you call home should always be a place of comfort. Warm and cozy in winter, cool and relaxing in summer. If your home isn't delivering the comfort you expect, call Bryant. It's more than just hot and cold to them. It's about providing the best comfort solutions. And Bryant gives you a full 24-month test drive on your home comfort system. Get full details at bryantlincoln.com or call 467-1111. Bryant Air Conditioning, Heating, Electrical, and Plumbing. We do whatever it takes. I wanted to quit for so long, but I didn't know where to start. I was afraid of what people would think, but then I found the right support to start my recovery journey. One in 14 Americans reports experiencing a substance use disorder, a treatable medical condition. Treatment can take many forms, so there are a variety of options to explore and find the one that works best for you. Recovery from drug addiction is possible. Paid for by the CDC. Sponsored by Nebraska DHHS. Aired with the Nebraska Broadcasters Association and this station. Back to On the Block with Stricken Nate on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Welcome back to On the Block with Strick and Nate. But my partner today is not Nate. It is Rico Suave. Much better, much better than Nate. And much smarter, too. So, you know. I don't know about that. Much better is. looking. Uh, you know, I got that. <laughs> Especially with the fresh cut. You like it? You like it? You like that? Uh, yeah, yeah, it is. Really clean. Right. Getting ready. Getting ready. Getting ready That's for the good. holiday season, man. You know? You know, people want to take pictures while you're opening presents. You got to look good. Gotta look good. Gotta look good, my brother. And you do, by the way. And so, um, listen, this is open discussion session. As we're going into the Christmas holiday, there are things, there are topics, there are uh, discussions that are out there that you maybe want to bring up. I'm going to I'm gonna start it off by throwing it, uh, this out there. Um, okay. Men's and women's basketball are jumping off into the heart of their, uh, the Big Ten season. Okay. Who do you think, Rico, finishes better and does better Ooh. and makes more noise in the Big Ten season, the men or the women's team? Mm. Mm. That's a hard one because – so the, the, the two main differences between these teams are the women's team is and has been very good. The men's team has been struggling and might be good this year, but we're still not sure. We, we still don't know exactly how good they can and will be, um, but they have the potential to have a pretty solid season. The other thing is the women, although they are and have been good, the other women's squads in the Big Ten are also really good. They do have two, I think, yeah, two wins under their belt with their upset win uh, at Maryland and the big win against Wisconsin inside PBA. So they're already 2-0 and in the Big Ten. But I believe they open up Big Ten play, like, you know, consistent Big Ten play with Michigan, who is the top 25 in their own right. And by the way, they're going to have to play Iowa and Caitlin Clark, who <laughs> is the <laughs> fastest college women's collegiate basketball player to reach 2,000 points as she did it in 75 games. That's crazy. Hey, she is the Steph Curry of the women's game. I don't care what anybody says. Is a beast. She's a killer. Um, so, you know, the, the Nebraska women are going to have to face that. Oh, and by the way, they're going to have to do all of this without Allison Widener, who we still don't know exactly how severe her knee injury is. We know it's a knee injury because that's what she was holding. She wasn't putting any pressure on it. Um, we don't know how severe it is. We don't know how long she's going to be out. But my guess, based on how it looked, and how she looked after the game, 
yeah, I don't think she's playing the rest of the season. If she is, it's going to be really, really late into the season. I don't expect to see her anytime soon. So they're going to have to do it without her. They're going to have to go a little bit deeper onto their bench. It's a good thing they got Maggie Mendelson uh, coming over from the volleyball team who played her second game and is going to give them big minutes in the middle there. Um, but I think I'm going to have to go with the women just because of how consistent they've been and how on fire Jazz Shelley has been. Uh, lately from from really everywhere on the floor and being able to, to dish out the rock. And they got Sam Hybe back from her knee injury. So I think the yeah. women will have a better Big Ten record and make more noise in the Big Ten season than the men. But I will say the men have an opportunity for a couple probable big upsets in the Big Ten. I mean, if you're able to hang with the number one team in the nation with, in Purdue, and I know people are like, oh, you can't hang on that for too long. Look, they did it. They, I don't care what they did it. It was a full strength Purdue team and a full strength Nebraska team. And they were able to stick with them. I understand that they ended up losing big to Kansas state afterwards, but they didn't have the juice on that one. They had the juice. They'll have the juice against every big 10 team. And they know these teams better uh, than they did that Kansas state team. So I, I think that they'll make a little bit of noise, but in my eyes, the women will have a more successful season than the men. I mean, looking at it though, Rico, are you, are you, the women, they're coming off a really good stretch. I mean, they've won five straight now. Uh, starting off with a, tw- a win against a 90 to 67 win against a team that they could not beat or get over the hump on, which is the 20th ranked Maryland Terrapins. And then they go on a run. They beat Wisconsin, Sanford, Wyoming, and have a triple overtime game against Kansas, which is the number 20th ranked team in the country. Right before you're about to face the number 19 and the number four team in the country out of Indiana. So I, this is a gauntlet stretch for them. They're already off to a tremendous start. They're riding a high. They are very confident right now. Uh, they have Michigan at home, which if they can pull that off, it can, if it can give them a lot of confidence before they go into Bloomington to face a, a tough Indiana team. If they can go through this stretch, if they, if they, yeah, if they can go through this stretch uh, to, to uh, getting two out of three, I think that's a big win for them. Um, uh, and, and a good start for them coming out of there. I think it's going to be a little bit tougher for the men. I really do. The reason being is I think that the men, um, they're going to have to find themselves. And this this next game against Iowa is going to be very tough because Iowa was coming off a devastating loss. They're getting, they, they got their head thumped, and they're not going to be happy <laughs> about that. But the good thing is Nebraska will have them at home. Um, as long as they meet the challenge, I think they're going to be okay. Brad says the women, the men aren't going to win, but three more games. Um, Brad, I'm looking at the schedule and um, I'm trying to figure out where that is. Okay. So even if they lose to Iowa, um, I still think they could probably beat Minnesota at Minnesota. Mm-hmm. Illinois coming here at home it would be a tough one. Very Illinois, possible. So Illinois, I understand they're 16th in the nation. Uh, they just lost big to Missouri, uh, and they lost big to Penn State. Yes. They they were at home against Penn State and lost big. They went on the road to Missouri and lost big. So I understand they're 16th in the nation, but they're gettable. I think that's a gettable game as well. I could see that being two. I think you lose at Purdue. Um, Ohio State at home, they've already done that before. Um, they're not scary this year to me. That's a possible one. Definitely Northwestern. Um, is one. Nine and two. I still think they're good, but I think they got they've got great guard play. That's where mm-hmm. they win. Is is they you know anytime you have great guard play, you you're you're gonna win a great fair share of your games, right? Mm-hmm. Um, looking down the list, Wisconsin might be a tough one for them. Michigan's not great. I, they're still Michigan. They're still coached by Juwan Howard. They still have all those amazing players, but it doesn't seem like they're gelling. I understand. I agree. Brian. Later in the season, so they might be, you know, cohesive by then. But as of right now, where it stands, Michigan has not looked that great. I think they win more than three games, though. Uh, I, I, I can't buy in on that one. Uh, call us on the Honda Lincoln Hotline if you want to get into the discussion. Uh, there's another part of the discussion I want to throw out there. Um, also, uh, didn't Dan O oh, says uh, when we were talking about the Hendon Hooker situation, he thinks fourth or fifth. Hooker to the Titans. Hmm. They didn't the Titans take a quarterback in the last. They have uh not Can't Desmond Ritter. He went to uh Atlanta. They took somebody la- in the last draft. 
I can't remember exactly who they did take, but he did throw that out there. I wanted to acknowledge him on that. Um, One thing I do want to throw out is what's going on right now in the NBA? Who's shining and who's whining? They took Uh, Malik Willis. Malik Willis? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. They're not taking it. Yeah, I don't think they're going to take that. That may not, they may not happen. Um, Who's whining and who's shining in the NBA right now, Rico, to you? Oh, whining? Uh, Golden State? That was who I was going to say, and that's what I, I wanted don't know to know. I don't know what's wrong. They they lost Steph Curry. You would still think they're a solid team. They're, they're a good team, with even without Steph Curry. They have been absolute garbage without Steph Curry. I did. Mm-hmm. I understand he's one of, if not the best player in the league, but to lose him and lose to these teams in the fashion that you're losing – is just indescribable. You're a good team. You have a Jordan Poole who you just signed to a massive contract. You have a Clay Thompson who, although he's coming off of, of two devastating injuries, he's still one of the better shooting guards in the NBA. I understand he's still getting back to it, but still, he's one of and the better injured shooting guards now. in the NBA. You have a James Wiseman who you took number one overall who should be playing better than he is playing. I don't understand. You have a Draymond Green who, although his skill set is is – fits really well with Golden State as they are constructed, and you're not sure exactly how he would fit with another team, the way that he plays with Golden State is is Hall of Fame worthy. And none of them are making any type of difference in leading these this Golden State team to any type of wins without Steph Curry on the court. And the fact that he has that massive of an impact is just mind-blowing to me. Rico, that has been he has been the glue of what I've said a long time that is going to be a detriment. And it goes back to what I just talked about when Dan asked the the question of me earlier. Um, Steph Curry was the glue that kept it together because right now there's still some bitterness. I still think, I don't care what you say, there's still some bitterness in that locker room between Mm -hmm. what happened between Poole and Draymond Green. Draymond Draymond Green, uh, I think they're in trouble. I really do. They they don't really have anything outside of maybe Wiseman who they could move or maybe Kaminga. I just don't think no one's going to be able to salary swap and trade out um, for um, um, uh, uh, not Draymond, but uh, Draymond's unmovable. I don't think no one wants to take that on. But Mm Clay Thompson, I don't think someone – they they won't be able to get back. They're gonna want to. They're gonna have to take on some salaries in order to move uh, Clay Thompson. Meaning they don't have the room to take that on. So I think they're just in a trouble. They're in a quagmire. And I think this is why they didn't re-sign their GM uh, because I think they feel as if they're put in a bad place. Um, I think another can thing. I just, go ahead. Can I get a load of texture really fast? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This unnamed texture says Wiseman's been in the G League. Shows how much you know about the NBA. James Wiseman scored thirty points in their last game. Yeah, he's been up and down. They, yeah, I, he's, I, he's, down, he's, he's been playing. He's played in the last. Yeah. He's played in the last two games for the Golden State Warriors. That's I understand that. he's been up and down, but he's currently called up and playing for the Golden State Warriors, not the Santa Monica, whatever they are, Santa Cruz, whatever they are in the G League, the the Golden State Warriors affiliate. He's playing with the Golden State Warriors. So, yes, I I do know. Yes, you're absolutely right. He had 30. Um, Another whining team right now, I think, is the Dallas Mavericks. I think they're Mm. they're trying to figure it off, even though they're still kind of winning games. They're five. uh, They've won five of their last 10. Um, they're, they're still they're still an uncertain team about uh, where their help is going to come from. They're very inconsistent in their shooting. Um, they don't know if they don't have Luca. And exactly. that's another guy. If Luca Luca's like the Steph Curry, if he goes down, what does Dallas do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't I don't know who they would turn to. Like they have you know, Tim Hardaway Jr., like he's not going to be your, your centerpiece. Christian Wood's not going to be a centerpiece. Although he's a really good center, you're not going to run your offense through a Christian Wood. Spencer Dinwiddie has that potential, but, I mean, in his advanced age, I wouldn't really want to run my my offense through a Spencer Dinwiddie. So if Luka yeah. Doncic, God forbid, goes down for an extended period of time, the Dallas Mavericks are in a world of hurt. Yeah, and because they paid Hardaway. They've got Dinwiddie. And then, you know, Christian, they, they've got all these players that have got all this kind of money, but none of them is really 
that next level guy that can fit in and, and, and really make things happen for them. So they're, they got about a couple years to really make it happen. Otherwise, um, uh, I think uh, Luke is going to be very frustrated and ready to go. So I think they're whining. The Here's Lakers are some- trending in the right direction, but just the breaking news of today is Anthony Davis has a stress fracture, I believe is what it was in his foot. Again. Be it, definitely. Again. The dude so they're can't done. stay healthy. Yeah, again, they're done. <laughs> they are done easy. There's nothing they can do about it. They are done. I don't even think they make the playoffs, so they're absolutely whining right now. But I will tell you who I think is shining, and it's and they're they're getting, and you know when I say it can't get right, I think they're getting right. The Brooklyn Nets right now, mm. nine out of their last ten, they are shining and they're playing some great basketball right now. Rico, they really are. They really are. Even though I don't want to give any credit to to the Brooklyn Nets in at all, and I don't want I want them to be whining. Uh, for the rest of forever because I despise Brooklyn. I despise the Nets. They are playing some really good basketball. Uh, Kyrie and Kevin Durant might be meshing. The team might be finally meshing despite not having really anybody after those two. Uh, They're figuring it out. They're finding ways to win, and and those two are really shouldering the load for the Nets. Yeah, man. It's like their secondhand pieces are really kind of performing for them and giving them great balance. You're led by Kyrie and Durant. Durant averaging at his age a 30-piece, uh, giving getting buckets right now and getting the job done. Um, and and you've got guys that are like Nick Claxton, who is just kind of just solid. You know, they the bunch Royce of solid Rico. guys. You know, Joe Harris. Yeah, Seth and Curry. Ben Sim- Simmons is actually okay. Yeah. For like what he's doing, he's doing enough. He's not, yeah. he's not, you know, number one overall pick playing. But he, I mean, in their last game, which was a 30 point win over the Golden State Warriors, Ben Simmons had 10 points, eight assists, and four rebounds. Yeah, he leads the team in assists. <laughs> ben Simmons leads their team in assists. That's he what they, he just, he's just playing his role and he's exactly. just doing what he can to help them. Don't ask him games. to do too much. Yeah, yeah. Milkman asked you a question Why do you hate the Nets, Rico? Why do I hate the Nets? Because they're in New York and they're the B team and they will always be the B team. It doesn't matter how good they are. It doesn't matter if they win. He's a Knicks fan. The New York Knicks are the A team, the A plus plus team in the state of New York, in the city of New York. And it doesn't matter what the Nets do. The Knicks will always be superior. Oh man. I wish, uh, I wish we could have taken a call. Look, the Knicks had won eight in a row before their last game. They were trending in the in a, the right direction. They're, they're currently sixth in the East. Uh, the mid three, as people are calling them, are playing extremely well. Jalen Brunson no longer overpaid. He's playing like an all-star. He should be and will be an all-star. R.J. Barrett, although he started the season extremely slow, has slowly turned himself back into the R.J. Barrett we know and love, averaging about 21 points in their last eight games. And Julius Randle finally has decided, hey, this is Jalen Brunson's team. I'm going to take a step back. I'm going to take a back seat. I'm going to be the number two option. And he's flourishing in that role, averaging a double-double uh, points and rebounds in their last eight games. Uh, I, I could go on. I'm going to throw out a couple shinings, and that is definitely the Cleveland Cal- Cavaliers are playing above their, their board. They're winning out on the trade that happened between Brooklyn and Cleveland as well as they won on the – uh, Utah Jazz trade with Donovan Mitchell and Darius Garland and Mitchell are playing together Ooh. with great unity and they're they're vibing right now. So I, I kind of yeah. like what they got going on. Um, Charlotte Hornets are continues to be trash. Another shine is the New Orleans Hornets. I'm sorry, New Orleans Pelicans. I did the, not see this coming. No one saw that coming. <laughs> they're balling. I guess Zion is actually good. <laughs> Zion is doing his thing. And listen, they have been doing a lot of this without their full their full roster. Mm-hmm. That's what's been crazy. They've been doing a lot of this without the full strength of of, of having um um not not a Brandon Ingram. Yep, this is all without. Yeah, he, he was. Yeah, he, he might have almost been or been an All Star last season, but he easily their leading scorer from last season, and he's he's barely been playing this year, and and they've just been carried like. I'm going I'm to throw some names out there. You ready for this? Herb Jones. Mm. Um, hold on. Let me see. Let me see what his name is. Najee Marshall. I didn't even know his name was. Jonas Valanciunas. CJ McCollum. Great trade to get him. Yes. Yes. And uh, Troy. I think it's Troy. Trey, Trey Murphy. Murphy. 
third. Mm-hmm. That's their starting lineup. And they beat the Spurs by almost 10 points. They beat them by nine points. I understand the Spurs aren't very good. But again, that's with that lineup. No Zion, no Brandon Ingram. Facts. Facts. So those are some of the shining and the whinings of the NBA uh, open discussion. Some of you guys think that the women are going to take it. I do too. I think the women are going to have a phenomenal season in the Big Ten. They're going to make a lot of noise. Uh, but I do think that the men are going to win more than three games. I could be wrong, but I hope that they do. Um, we're going to have to take a break right now. We'll finish off with old school transfer and having a nice little crossover when we come back on 93.7, the ticket, the ticket, fm.com. Me and Rico will be right back. One more segment right after this. This is Lindsay Teal from the Nebraska golf team. If you're looking for a Christmas gift for the avid golfer in your life, don't give them something they can't even use until spring. Get them the gift of indoor golf from Double Eagle Golf. Grab a gift card for a stocking stuffer or give the gift of a membership and let them golf all year long. Their space is also perfect for Christmas parties, corporate events, birthday parties, or anything else. See for yourself, Double Eagle Golf, just five minutes from downtown at the Kinetic Sports Complex on West Oak Street. Ever think of having a career in plumbing or heating? Do you enjoy watching your favorite game in a nice, comfortable space? Taking a shower after a warm day? Well, everyone we serve at Bigger Staff Plumbing, Heating, and Air sure does. If you're interested in a career in plumbing, heating, and air, come join our team where you'll get paid while training. No experience required. Enjoy great pay and benefits in a friendly environment. Call Bigger Staff Plumbing, Heating, and Air at 402-466-8118 or apply online at biggerstaffs.com. What does continuing education mean to you? At Southeast Community College, it means helping you advance. Whether that's a fundamental course in accounting or marketing to help your business or helping you become a better leader, SCC can help you take the next step. Financial assistance is available too. Learn more about our business development classes at southeast.edu slash continuing education. SCC your path to personal and professional development. Wall-to-Wall Wine and Spirits is now open in Lincoln. Shop our expansive collection of wine, beer, spirits, and cigars at 5040 North 27th Street. From top shelf liquor to crowd favorite beer, Wall-to-Wall Wine and Spirits has a beverage for every taste and every budget. Plus, join our loyalty program to earn rewards and save on future purchases. Shop Wall-to-Wall Wine and Spirits at 5040 North 27th Street in Lincoln. That's 5040 North 27th Street. The place you call home should always be a place of comfort. Warm and cozy in winter, cool and relaxing in summer. If your home isn't delivering the comfort you expect, call Bryant. It's more than just hot and cold to them. It's about providing the best comfort solutions. And Bryant gives you a full 24-month test drive on your home comfort system. Get full details at bryantlincoln.com or call 467-1111. Bryant Air Conditioning, Heating, Electrical, and Plumbing. We do whatever it takes. Your Christmas list changes a lot as you get older. Dreams of video games, remote control cars, and baseball gloves turn into dreams of shoes. You know, practical things. Brown's Shoe Fit is the king of shoes in Lincoln with brands like Sorel, Ugg, and Hey Dudes to make you fashionable and comfortable. Get two pairs of Hey Dudes for $100 and buy three, get one free on Smart Wool Socks for the ultimate stocking stuffer. And don't forget a reliable gift card for that hard-to-buy-for person in your life. Brown Shoe Fit at 66 and Q in Lincoln. Did you know that the U.S. has added over 1,100 new breweries in the last 18 months? Learn more by shopping at Myers Cork and Bottle, 13th and South, and by tuning in to Thirsty Thursdays with Kevin Myers, because sports are better with a drink in your hand and a friend at your side. Where will your path take you, traveler? To seek fortune in a new career? Or on a journey to distant lands for a well-deserved vacation? Wherever you go, one distraction could spell disaster. You can change your fate, adventurer. Don't drive distracted. Paid for by the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Are you looking for a solid, stable career in assembly, CNC machining, or injection molding? We got you covered. Hi, Bob Williams, HR Director for Garner Industries, a world-class manufacturer with a 70-year history right here in Lincoln. 
And I just listed some great career opportunities that you can find by logging into GarnerIndustries.com. If you want top pay, excellent benefits, flexible work hours, and the opportunity to work in a clean, modern, air-conditioned facility with great people, contact me today by applying online at GarnerIndustries.com. Start your Sundays off right with Jeff and Nicole Essink on Fitness Fanatics. Jeff and Nicole discuss health and wellness, how to achieve fitness goals, and more through the life of gym owners and gym goers. It's Fitness Fanatics from 9 to 11 a.m. on Sundays on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Back to On the Block with Strick and Nate on 93.7 The Ticket and theticketfm.com. Final thoughts here on the block. <laughs> it's a great day. We hope that everybody on the block, the blockheads, all have a wonderful weekend as you and spending this quality time with your family. So much to be grateful for and thankful for. Hope that the the wine, the eggnog, or whatever it is, is sitting at the fireplace, standing out, have your ugly sweatshirts on, whatever it is, your pajama parties, all the things that you're going to be doing with family this weekend. We hope that each and every one of you have an enjoyable one. Um, Rico, I'm not in studio, so there's no crossover today. So we're just giving final thoughts. Is that correct? Yes, we're just giving final thoughts. Uh, Jay Foreman will be he is he is out and about. He's got a busy life, so he is uh, going to call in for the first two segments of his show. So uh, for for old school, so it's just me and you. We'll give our final thoughts, and uh, then we'll send it to break and, and start old school. And and you can uh, start your Christmas festivities. Well, you know me, I'm a wino, so I got the wine ready, baby. Ooh, it's, it's, buddy. It's, it's, on a cool day, I got. I, I, I miss Thirsty Thursday. Y'all set it off without me, but it's okay. I still got. I'm still gonna tap in. Apparently, you know? it was delicious. <laughs> Stretch pits. You know how we do it. Woo! <laughs> she. But anyway, listen. We do hope you guys have a wonderful holiday with you and your families once again. Um, We'll see you not next Monday. We're going to be off. There will be no block party here next Monday because we're going to be off and we're going to be enjoying our time as well. But we'll see you Tuesday right back here. Same time, two to four on the block. Adios for the day. Y'all have a great time with the family. Nick, Nick's over here throwing his hands up. What, Nick? Did you want to? What's up, Nick? Hey, Stricky. What's up? Hey, I just want to tell you Merry Christmas, man. Nick Sainer, my guy, Merry Christmas to you as well, my friend. I'm Have a wonderful holiday. Uh, I'm glad you haven't frozen. I'm glad, no. that, uh, I'm glad that, that that shiny head of yours is still good to go. <laughs> <laughs> still shining. Shining yeah, and not sure, whining. I'm sure, I'm sure it's glistening. Gorgeous. <laughs> shining and not whining. All right, uh, Nick. <laughs> We appreciate you guys once again. And in the words of the great Rico, adios. Ever think of having a career in plumbing or heating? Do you enjoy 